Hi everyone, uh, this is Tiffany Patterson and I'm going to be presenting to you guys on the Tiny House Movement. Um, just a quick refresher, I think most of you know from the beginning of this semester, um, I am a Human Resource Management major and I do graduate in May of this next year, so I'm down in my last 10 months in school. Um, the Tiny House Movement is something that I am personally very passionate about and something that I'm currently already applying to my life. So I'm really excited to share the presentation with you and we will get started. So the tiny house movement is something that's been taking place um, by people who are really not wanting to conform to society and kind of what um, has told us our entire lives, you know, that we grow up and we buy our huge house with four bedrooms and two bathrooms and uh, maybe to some people that's not even that huge which is um, kind of a little scary but um, it's basically telling us that we are capable of living with a lot less than we're used to and that there can be great benefits to that um, as you can see on the screen there is some information about um, the typical American average home and um, kind of what a tiny home would encompass for you. So um, everyone's reason for going tiny um, on a priority scale seems to be a little bit different. Um, from an environmental standpoint, there definitely are a lot of people who decide to go tiny for that, so that way they can make a lot less of an impact on the earth. Um, also, right on top of the list is uh, just the financial freedom and uh, security that comes from the tiny house movement, whether you're building your own or paying someone to build a tiny house for you, it typically ends up costing a lot less than owning um, your average American home. So for the most part, um, I do know the screen says 400 square feet for a tiny home, um, but in general up to 500 square feet is typically um, tolerated and it is perf um, it is good to keep in mind that uh, any downsizing for anyone is absolutely um, appreciated and you know it doesn't go unnoticed um, some people could be coming from something like 5,000 square feet so maybe downsizing to 2,600 square feet is going tiny for them so that is still important because they are making less of an impact um, and they are looking to simplify their own life um, so some other things that you don't see directly on the screen, um, about one third to one half of an American's income is dedicated to providing um, a roof over their head. And 76% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck because of their mortgage. Um, on the other hand, 68% uh, of tiny house uh, dwellers live without a mortgage at all. and they also have more money in um, their regular checking accounts and most certainly their savings accounts because they don't have um, to make the financial output every month that someone living in a larger home would. Um, also, I thought it was um, pretty interesting that uh, tiny house dwellers are actually twice as likely to have earned a master's degree during the course of their lives um, versus someone who lives in a more standardized home of that 2,600 square feet. Um, they're on the same course as far as a bachelor's, but there is um, about double the rate of a master's degree for people that live in tiny homes. Okay, um, so the models you see in front of you are all made from a company known as Tumbleweed, and they're basically the first um, and still the most commonly known tiny house company. So basically at this point, um, they've grown to be so well nationally recognized that they actually travel throughout the United States and they put on uh, workshops where you can actually attend and you can start the build of your tiny house at the workshop. You can just get more information about the tiny house movement. Um, and I should note here that um, you'll see that all of these tiny homes are on trailers, which means that they're basically mobile, uh, like a pull-behind RV. So the tiny house movement 
is very centered on mobility and um, the freedom of not um, being tied down to one place. So that's why you'll see that a lot of these structures, especially in the instance of tumbleweed, will be built onto a movable trailer so that way people can build their home and literally take it anywhere and everywhere with them. Um, that's also why you'll see that all of these models pictured here do have a little bit smaller square footage than even that higher end of 400 or 500 square foot because you do have to accommodate what can fit on a trailer. Um, but you get away with um, not needing to comply with building codes for property and different things like that when you do build your structure on a mobile trailer. So that's also very appealing to a lot of people. Um, it's also important to note, we've uh, mentioned financials already, that um, these floor plans, if you're having them built by Tumbleweed, do start at $57,000. Um, and they kind of max out at 69000 They can get a little bit more expensive than that if you put higher upgrades in them. Um, but basically, that's going to be the max that you're looking at. And if you just decide to purchase a tumbleweed floor plan and kind of do it yourself, you're actually going to cut your costs typically in about half. So you're looking at maybe closer to $30,000 um, for a tiny house, which is why so many tiny house dwellers are able to live mortgage-free. Okay, so cabins and cottages are another form of tiny house dwelling, and they actually offer more of the permanence of a typical home. So you could still um, build like a basement or a cellar underneath either one of these models that you see in front of you. Um, you're still going to be less than your 500 square foot, um, and everything is very well utilized. There's not any wasted space. Um, for me in particular, I'm much more attracted to the, the cabin style, just feeling more connected with nature and using the wood material, um, kind of having that exposed. And I really like the idea of the floor plan, which offers the loft. I just think that opens it up and it still makes your bedroom area seem a little bit more private and that's just more personally appealing to me. Um, and then these models, um, for people who might want to look into them as far as building one and living one yourself, they can start at about twenty-five to 30000 um, That typically means that they're going to be unwinterized, however. So if you plan to continue living in Erie, Pennsylvania, um, you can't really go with that option. So you're going to need to spend a little bit more to have... Um, the building winterized and then at that point um, you know they basically will go up 10 to 15 grand at least so you're looking at at least 40 40 grand or a little bit higher than that for one of these um, but again this is essentially still offering the same thing as far as the um, environment and the financial security to someone it's just not necessarily offering you that mobility because these are going to come with the different building codes and they're not going to be able to fit on the back of a trailer so easily okay so environmental advantages of the tiny house movement um, i'm sure you can just think about the fact of what owning a large house encompasses um, there's just so much maintenance that needs to be done um, and the biggest thing that really hits home with myself and um, I think a lot of you guys too from our discussions is the fact that as consumers we're so um, used to accumulating all of this stuff um, and as we learned in our videos pretty much all of the stuff that we own contains this plastic um, that we tend to use for maybe a couple years and then we throw it away and it ends up in a foreign country or polluting our oceans, um, our natural water systems. Um, you guys were all present for the lectures and everything so I know I don't need to go into that too depth with you. But when you have a smaller space you really have to prioritize what's important to you and what you're going to display, what you're going to spend money on. Um, and you tend to become a little bit more conscious of your, your habits and how you do affect the world around you. Um, there are tiny house dwellers, um, especially if you are going the mobile route, who decide not to put like the RV 
um, system in them that have like the gray and fresh water holding tanks um, so they don't have to worry about dump sites and they will go completely um, off grid so typically um, in the middle picture there there's actually a composting toilet which most commonly you know you can do like that setup there where the box will fold down over the bucket there's a typical toilet seat on the top um, and then you can use a sawdust formula um, to sprinkle over it and then you will dispose of it accordingly um, you know when it gets to that point and um, of course the solar technology I know that's been mentioned several times in here as well that's a huge thing with tiny home dwellers um, even though they're already using significantly less power um, than your typical sized American home um, tiny house dwellers are really interested in how they can use that power better and more sustainably so of course um, if, if they can afford that extra expense they'll invest in the power of solar technology Okay, so um, from my own personal perspective, I do already live in a studio apartment that is pictured here. Apologize for the mess. We were getting ready to go camping in there. Um, but you will see that my kitchen, my bed, um, a little bit of my couch over there on the right side, um, that's all one big main room. And then out the door there is actually my deck, um, which I'm sitting out on right now recording this presentation because uh, my fiance is inside and I don't want to disturb him. But uh, we decided to move out to the country just for basically peace of mind and we had this opportunity come up and we had noticed already um, just being in our mid-20s that we had accumulated a lot of stuff and um, during our relationship we'd lived in a three-bedroom house we lived in a two-bedroom townhouse um, prior to this place we were living in like a two-bedroom flat in Erie near Mercyhurst that was about 1200 square foot and uh, we just we had a dining table that we never used that we never sat at we had all this furniture in our living room that the only time we ever used it was if we were entertaining and uh, we just realized that we were wasting a lot and it, it wasn't needed so this has been a really good move for us at a young age and it's really let us know that we can live in a smaller space and we enjoy ourselves more in a smaller space so our future aspirations at this time are to eventually build or buy um, some sort of cabin uh, hopefully that would have a loft and outdoor space i would really like to get away from using the traditional washer dryer so much i'd like to maybe hand wash a little bit more and also hang dry um, on a line outside if that were available and we've also looked a lot at moving to the west coast and in the realms of uh, portland oregon just because their community and their surroundings are very environmentally conscious as far as um the whole vehicle emissions thing that we had discussed they offer you know public transportation and they're also the most bike friendly city in the united states which is very interesting to me so on a personal level if i can live smaller and I can also downsize in the um, aspect of my vehicle and transportation realm. Um, I think I'm going to be doing um, a great job not contributing so many emissions and pollu pollutants into the environment, um, even as I am now due to my commute from living out here. Um, I also did an interview with Carl and Linda, who live not too far from my fiance and I and they live in the A-frame home that's pictured on the right and then across from them are Jim and Amanda's tiny cabin that features a loft. So that's basically an ideal picture of what my fiance and I will be looking at building and when we shared our life goals with Jim and Linda um, they thought it would be absolutely perfect for us and the one message that they you know kind of passed along to us was that for right now, if we're seeking financial freedom and to make less of an impact, that um, most certainly to go for it and do that to gain the stability, figure out exactly, you know, where we want to go, where we want to be. And then at, at some point or another, if we did um, expand and have a family, we can always add on to our tiny dwelling. Um, it doesn't have to stay 300 square foot or 400 square foot. We could add on an extra 200 square foot for a bedroom if that were needed. So. All right, and there are my sources. I do recommend right at the bottom, Tiny, A Story About Living Small is a very interesting documentary on Netflix. All right, thank you. Bye.